Welcome to the second half of Econ 307, the data project. So the top five skills that employers look for in college graduates are leadership, problem solving, written communication, ability to work in a team, and analytical quantitative skills. And the second half of the course is going to do all of these. The leadership and ability to work in team, that will be your continued work in groups. And then problem solving skills, written communication skills, and analytical quantitative skills will all be part of the second half of the course. And number three especially, which you haven't seen before in this course, you'll be doing a fair amount of writing. So the course objectives from the syllabus, it says after successful completion of this course, students will have the data and writing skills to be able to locate and access high quality data and literature pertaining to economics, manage data in Excel, identify, characterize, and evaluate economic measurements, develop and test simple analytical models, interpret summary statistics and regression results, and express economic concepts, methods, and findings verbally and in writing using the citation organization and formatting conventions that are standard in the field of economics. And these conventions will also be useful and transferable to other fields. The data project itself uh, is going to involve learning how to do economic research by investigating a simple relationship between money and something people care about like happiness or health and we'll do that at the country level. So that's a basic economics question and it's a useful one for us because it's very straightforward and we're going to be able to get data on it and we're going to be able to write a research paper using that question. Uh, again you'll write up your findings in the style and using the conventions of economics and you'll present your findings to your classmates. So you just finished the math portion of the class and that was worth half of the points for your final grade and then the data and writing portion will be worth the other half and it's set up in a very similar way 20 percent lab, seven and a half percent quizzes and then the equivalent of the exams um, for the data portion are going to be your final paper which is worth 15 percent of the grade and then 7.5 percent for the presentation. So you should see the course schedule for the lab topics, the required readings, and the due dates for all of this. Um, when you look at the course schedule, uh, you'll see how the work is divided up for the next part of the semester. Now, lots of students ask, well, what's group and what's individual? So the labs are always groups. The group members uh, are going to have the same topic and data for their project. The labs will generate the content needed for writing assignments. Uh, the final paper and the presentation. Everything else is individual. So the writing assignments you'll do on your own, the final paper you'll do on your own, and even though you'll be developing a PowerPoint presentation in lab, each student will present the entire thing. It's only like three to five minutes, but each student will do the presentation individually. And of course the quizzes are individual. Students also ask why not just write a group paper? Well, if you want to learn how to write, you have to practice writing. And uh, we want you to have a lot of practice writing, and so you're going to be writing the whole thing. Um, we also think that you're going to write a better paper for having work with your group to define a topic, to collect and prepare the data, um, and especially to analyze the data and interpret the results. And this last one is where you'll really develop uh, the ideas for the paper and what you're going to say in the paper. And that's often the hardest part, like, what do I have to say? Um, you know, instead of, a lot of times you go on and on about various things, like you go on tangents and you give background and you give the history because you're not really sure how to fill up the pages that the professor wants you to fill up. Well, in group, you'll have a lot of opportunity to develop the, the ideas that will form um, your paper. And then um, that's just another way of saying that for thinking things through, two heads really are better than one and we argue that three are the best.